Well, this kind of physics bumps right up against philosophy, absolutely. And in fact, many of the best things being written about the foundations of quantum mechanics now are being written by philosophers. And many of those philosophers have PhDs in physics before switching into philosophy. Hmm. Um, there's a style of asking questions about the physical world that philosophy departments approve of and physics departments do not approve of. To me, it's a, still a very important part of understanding the world. So I don't really care if you want to call it philosophy or physics. It's trying to understand the world, right? Right. And, and it's so not very Caltech to come out It's not very caltech -y. There's a couple of very good people at Caltech doing it, okay. but it's still not... The physics department doesn't want to be involved. Let's right, a lot of those way. places have a, a history of it being a very practical institution. We measure this. There's no, there's no room yeah. for anything not physically proven. And yet, to see this problem in a new way or the correct way, you might need to expand the mind. Some of the great men in history did that. Well, we've talked about um, how physicists have different predilections, different attitudes, different intuitions. And very common among the set of all physicists is kind of an idea that we want to keep things as simple as possible, right? Like a, a sort of down to brass tacks kind of approach to doing things. You know, show me the money, show me what's going to be predicted in your experiment. And that works for a large number of problems, but it doesn't work for every problem. Sometimes you need an attitude that says, let's take a breath, let's think about what all the words mean, let's think about what we're really saying, the nuances of every little detail of the rigorous argument. And that fits very well into a philosophical tradition, not so well into the scientific tradition. Yeah, I mean, the scientific method of which all my science fair projects were based upon, mm -hmm. which is you, uh, you make a prediction of what's going to happen, then you lay out an experimentation process, and then you compare the results with your prediction, and then you make a new yeah. realization of the world That's right. isn't necessarily work in quantum. Yeah. You, you might need well, some other elements. You, you, you need to think a little bit more carefully about things sometimes. That's all it is. And, uh, you know, physicists really like, and again, there is a little bit of a cultural shift and, and maybe it's changing, but physicists want to be able to make a prediction they can go test in the laboratory right away. And there are parts of physics today where that's just impractical. It's not that it can't be done in principle, but when you talk about the multiverse or the Big Bang, much less quantum mechanics, there are parts of the explanatory apparatus that are out of our experimental reach right now. So the question is, what are you gonna do about that? Are you gonna ignore those parts? Or are you just gonna sort of um, pretend they're not there? And the way I like to say it is, you know, you don't get to say, I'm not doing philosophy or I don't care about philosophy. All of these people are doing philosophy in one way or another. You can only do it well or do it badly. <laughs> and I think that a lot of physicists are secretly doing philosophy, they're just not doing it very well.